Hey guys, Ron here, and today I'm finally going to be designing the mascot legendary trio of my own personal fan-made region, Asson, which is based on the Middle East. I already made the starters in a separate series, and some Pokemon I made in my latest art-related videos are going to be part of this region, but the next major step is to create Pokemon who are the driving force of the plot and conflict. In order to understand the concept of these legendary Pokemon, I will first describe the origins of the trio in general, and then talk about the individual inspirations for each Pokemon before designing them. Please make sure to leave a like and check out the previous art videos, and remember I give sneak peeks for these Pokemon on Twitter and post the final artwork on my Instagram. Just putting that out there, you know. Now let me set the stage. My region, Asone, is filled with multiple cultures and a long history, but most importantly it is a region where the Pokemon are slightly more intelligent and powerful, considering it is the region where Pokemon training and battling was first created, and these ancient legendaries of mine played a big part in forming this region's iconic history. In order to understand the story of these legendaries, you will first need to know the biblical origins that they were translated from. In Judeo-Christian traditions, scholars have given rankings to the various celestial beings that have appeared in the Bible, an angel hierarchy, angels and archangels angels, who usually appear human-esque and convey messages of God, are actually relatively low in the hierarchy of angels, at least in Christianity and the rankings of a lot of Jewish scholars. Islam doesn't delve too deep into the hierarchy of angels. Of course, I'm only using all of this as inspiration, so it's not necessary to find the most accurate hierarchy of angels. The relatively higher ranking celestial beings are usually more, uh, complicated looking. The main three being Seraphim, Cherubim, and Ophanim. Seraphim, or the Burning Ones, are six-winged angels. Their burning wings usually cover their face and feet. They are passionate and usually standing near the throne of God. Cherubim are depicted to be childlike angels in early tradition, but in most other texts are these beings with multiple animal faces and wings. In some texts, they're incorporeal and have no concrete appearance. They have many different roles, but usually guard heaven. Keep in mind, I'm not going into too much detail with most of these explanations. The final relevant beings are the Ophanim, which refer to the wheels on the chariot of God, but are depicted in some texts as separate beings who have a cherub in the center and are surrounded by multiple wheels with countless eyes. To cut to the chase, my two mascot legendaries are going to be based on the humanoid angels, while my third legendary is going to be an amalgamation of these crazy high-ranking angels. But the final and most important inspiration will be from the non-canonical book of Enoch, which describes the exploits of the fallen angels like Samyaza, who in some traditions was a seraph. He and the fallen angels left heaven to eventually have children with humans. Their offspring were biblical giants. One of the fallen angels was Azazel, who taught humans how to make weapons and cosmetics and other unholy objects and acts. This led to a primal dark time in humanity. God sent down angels to survey the state of the earth and imprisoned the fallen angels and ultimately created the flood during Noah's time to reset humanity. So my two legendaries, who are based on Samyaza and Azazel, are going to be former members of Arceus' heavenly council, who came down to earth in ancient times. One was once a warrior of Arceus and came down to teach Pokemon how to battle and use their powers, while the other taught humans how to create primitive technology, like ancient Pokeballs, and how to tame Pokemon. This led to conflict between Pokemon and humans. The third legendary was ultimately sent down by Arceus to stop the impending war and seal the two legendaries. Let's first create the legendary that came down to teach humans. It will be based on Azazel. We get the word scapegoat from the Jewish ritual involving Azazel. A scapegoat is a person who is blamed for the mistakes of others, like Absol. Azazel, when personified, is usually depicted as a goat-like human, so we're going to take inspiration from the Nubian Ibex, a mountain goat common in the Middle East, and combine it with Azazel's tail to create a futuristic looking psychic goat like an alien that came down to earth to share its knowledge. This is inspired by the notion that ancient accounts of angels were actually encounters with futuristic aliens. Let's go! The question with a lot of bipedal legendaries is whether to give them broad shoulders or thick thighs. I don't know yet. I do know I want it to float and be bipedal, like Alakazam. I want both Pokemon to have shoulder pads, and of course, I know I want this Pokemon to have goat horns. This is a rough pass that took some inspiration from Zekrom, and the next pass will be a little more refined. I know that the pose and silhouette is the most important aspect of box art legendaries, but this one looks too physically powerful. I don't want it to stand like a confident fighter, it's a scrawny psychic type, but this pose is too diminutive. The head shape is almost right in this one, but the pose is not close yet. While the details aren't here, I do like the body segments on this one. I know I don't want any pointy parts, I think big arms like this would make sense since it uses its hands to precisely manipulate objects and create tools. I gotta give its horns uh, ridges like Ibex's horns, but the face will now begin to look more like what I want it to be, by making it have segments and a metallic helmet. I originally wanted this Pokemon to be Dark Type 2, since it uses forbidden knowledge, but by this point Steel Type makes a whole lot of sense and justifies its robotic look and technological theme. I'm trying to give some details so it looks like an intricate legendary. 
on making its goat beard and the end of its horns float, and the jewels it has on it are gonna be like the jewels that Arceus has on its arch. This is how it accesses celestial powers. I wanted to give it patterns under its eyes like Arceus, but I removed that later. It'll have lines like Palky and Dialga, and it'll have the legs of Arceus. I'm trying to give it technological wings because it's a fallen angel, but they can't be too big, almost as if it lost part of its wings after it fell from heaven. The original color scheme was pink and yellow, but I think we can all agree that its color scheme works better. I do alter things later though to make it work better with the other legendary, like giving it way bigger wings and some gradients. Presenting the Forbidden Knowledge Pokemon, Azar Era, from Azazel, Azar, Hebrew for help, Warera, which means us in Japanese, as in this Pokemon helped us, and finally Era, since it ushered in the modern era of humanity. It is Psychic Steel. This Pokemon was worshipped by men in ancient times, as it came down from heavens to teach man how to forge tools necessary to live in the dangerous world of Pokemon. It has the ability to conjure minerals and construct anachronistic devices. In ancient times, humans would present it with materials, and Azarera would use its telekinesis to instantly combine parts into a working machine. Some say that it was the wisest Pokemon on Arceus' cancel and spent millennia learning all there is to know about the world. Some scholars believe that it came down to Earth because it pitied humans and wanted to share the knowledge it had accrued. Others believe it hated Arceus' creations and wanted Pokemon to be subjugated by the most intelligent species on the planet. Either way, the gradual development of humans brought them into conflict with Pokemon and eventually led to an ancient war that thankfully ended in permanent peace and understanding between human and Pokemon. Since then, this Pokemon was blamed for the escalation in conflict. Some say Pokemon like Alakazam are descendants of this Pokemon. It has the ability Forge, which allows it to recreate any held item it used up in battle, like Harvest but for any item. You'll notice how the Pokemon I'm creating today will have descendants, just like the Fallen Angels did. I also hope you guys are aware of the fact that this Pokemon is supposed to be humanoid, since it approached humans with a familiar face. It wouldn't make sense if it was monstrous. This Pokemon represents the future, technology, humanity, knowledge, and all that good stuff. Now I'm going to make the legendary that came down to teach Pokemon how to utilize their elemental abilities. It is based on Samyaza, Seraphim, Egyptian gods like Ra, Horus, and Montu, the Egyptian god of war. Basically the falcon-headed gods. I knew I wanted this Pokemon to be fighting ghost, float like the other legendary, and have some kind of indication that it had wings at one point. But in the beginning, I leaned in too heavy on the Montu inspiration and made it a straight up bird man, cause th that way the wings would make sense. But I didn't want this Pokemon to simply look like a giant bird with extra wings. It had to match the other legendary, so I gave it a helmet too, but this time more of a soldier helmet instead of a futuristic headset. I also knew that I wanted Machamp to be a descendant of this Pokemon, so at one point I gave it four floating arms instead of wings. This is kinda closer, at, at least in the head department. I guess the other legendary will have jagged straight edges, and this one will be smooth and have round edges. But it doesn't look like a ghost yet. That's when I finally decided to give it a ghostly helmet, like Marshadow. Marshadow plays a big part in this Pokemon's lore, so it makes sense. The head is 90% there. I thought about giving it Will-O-Wisps for arms, since it used to be a Seraph, but nah. I think I hit something in this stage. Instead of giving it wings, I gave it a ghostly cape that used to be its wings. Actual biceps to contrast with Azarera's skinny biceps. Its hands will be Blaziken-like, and its shoulders would resemble Azarera's shoulders but on fire. I gave it lines on its body so it looks like a mummy, but also a fighter wrapped in bandages. I came up with this pose and the bandages became ribs, as if it were a skeleton. The concept is fully here. Now it's time to refine it, but since box art legendaries traditionally face opposite directions, it made perfect sense to flip it, and it kinda looks better flipped. I realized the last change should be to make the beak a bit less bird-like, cause again, I don't want it to simply be a bird man, I want it to have a vague appearance. I'm finishing the details and the colors are the opposite of Azarera's, but you can now see how cohesive the pair looks together. But goddamn, did that gradient make it look way cooler. Here is the hidden technique Pokemon, Shemorera. From Samyaza's Hebrew name, Shem Hazai, Shemar, Hebrew for kept or guarded, and Sorera, Japanese for them or those. As in, it guarded them, the Pokemon. It's fighting ghost. This Pokemon appeared in ancient times and taught Pokemon how to utilize their elemental powers in the most effective ways. It became a leader of Pokemon as they became more powerful. It has no nerves and therefore feels no pain. It is the ultimate soldier and sparring partner. It will go into battle without any doubts. It is said that it was once Arceus' personal warrior. It learned every technique imaginable. Some say it was also a disciple of Giratina, who imprinted its violent disposition onto Shemerera. Some scholars believe it pitied Pokemon and wanted them to rise to their full potential. 
while others say it wanted Pokemon to gain enough power to eventually rebel against humans. Nobody knows if it instigated or regretted the ancient war between humans and Pokemon. The deceased Pokemon that fought alongside it in the war became its Marshadow minions, and its descendants became what is known to be Machamp. Side note, it's kind of the reason Machamp has a beak. Some ancient religions even worshipped this Pokemon as it taught Pokemon techniques that their humans could utilize to benefit humanity as well. Its ability is Technique, which not only boosts the power of not very effective moves like Tinted Lens does, but also boosts the power of neutral moves. It's a devastating Pokemon. I love the fact that these Pokemon were the ancestors of Alakazam and Machamp. The idea for this Pokemon was the least concrete of the two, but ended up very successful. I don't know what I'm going to name my Pokemon games, you know, each version. Of course it has to relate to the themes of the game and the two box are legendaries. Pokemon Brain and Pokemon Brawn aren't perfect, but they make sense. Perhaps Pokemon Jade and Pokemon Amber are cool sounding and relate to the green and orange jewels that these Pokemon have. Let me know in the comment section what you think. Now I'm going to finally make the stronger third legendary Pokemon. Its emissary form, which I will make first, will be based on Seraphim and the various angels God sent down during the whole Fallen Angels fiasco, like Raphael and Uriel. Its crazy revelation form will be based on Ofanin. Just like how angels have a frightening appearance that can drive those that see them mad, so will the origin form of this Pokemon be unsettling. It's basically a servant of Arceus, a serpent with Arceus attributes, almost like the anti-Giratina. Giratina has Will, while this one just follows Arceus. It'll have face lines like the Creation Trio and Arceus, but it is a Seraph, so it'll have six wings, and arms that are reminiscent of Latios and Latias. My headcanon is that they are related to this Pokemon. The question is how fluffy to make it. That'll be up for debate until the end. I want to give it three wheels that are like the wheels or arc that Arceus has. They will be very important in its other form, and it will have Arceus jewels all around its body segments. This is the concept. Now I'm refining it. And the colors make total sense considering it's Arceus' right-hand man, uh, I mean Pokemon, but it doesn't look like this around Arceus. Let's make its original form. I mean, it's basically just a ball of fur with a mysterious face, surrounded by three rings that it has on its other form, and instead of eyes on its rings like the Ophanim, we're gonna place the jewels on the rings. Humans who saw this Pokemon mistook the jewels for eyes, since they are the same exact color as its eyes, and I'm making the rings jagged instead of smooth, cause it's not made of metal, but rather an otherworldly, unidentified material. The same material that Arceus' wheel is made of. And here he is, the Emissary Pokemon, Emiseroph. It is fairy dark. It's the direct messenger of Arceus. Scholars believe that it has no will of its own. It only does what Arceus tells it to. It will take all of its commands literally and won't doubt their importance. It has no remorse and it is debatable whether or not it has compassion. In ancient times, it was sent to deal with the outcome of Shemur era and Azar era's exploits. Unfortunately, conflict did break out. Nobody knows what the final straw was. It is said that it created the Pokemon Absol in its own image so that Absol could sense whenever another disaster would occur. In its emissary form, it has the ability pressure, but when facing a Pokemon with a base stat total of 600 or higher, this Pokemon reveals its true form, its revelation form. In this form, it has the unique ability Hysteria, which makes any Pokemon that saw it change forms go mad. The Pokemon will not be obedient anymore, as if you don't have enough badges to train it. Of course, this Pokemon, like all with its base stat total, isn't allowed in official battles. I hope you understand that this Pokemon is supposed to look uncanny and weird, unlike any Pokemon. Its rings spin super quickly and the body in the middle vibrates so intensely that it appears blurry. It's scary to look at it when animated. But how will this Pokemon come to play in my plot? What truly happened in ancient times that led to all-out war? How is it solved? Why is Team Ozone looking for these box art legendaries? You'll know once I begin my series that follows the actual plot of these games. The series won't begin until f f many months, because it takes a lot of time to create all the characters, story, region, and Pokemon. So make sure to subscribe to know when that comes out, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I will post final full artwork of these, and check the description for the music I use, the t-shirts I made for you guys, and my Patreon, where you can get cool rewards like seeing my videos days early or click the join button for the same rewards. I'll see you guys very soon.